Today is an improved version of yesterday. Tomorrow will be better than today. That's the life we have and I want you to believe it. Divine help, part four. We'll start the meeting tonight with Psalm 145, verse 15. This is not a starting point tonight, but as we worship, the Holy Ghost is fast-tracking this message. Psalm 145, verse 15. The eyes of all wait upon you and you give them their food or their meat in due season. When we wait, we get our food. We get our meat. The eyes of all. If you wait on him this month, he will give you your food. Amen. Somebody receive your inheritance. Amen. The eyes of all wait on you and you give them their meat in this season. When you wait, God will not deprive you. Verse 16, he said, you open your hand and satisfy. God is not hacker gone God. He opened his hand and satisfied the desire of every living thing. God opened his hand. When you look to him, he satisfies your desire. So this month for all of us crying for help, you will receive help. Amen. Somebody shout, I receive help. This is the month of divine help. My help has come. I receive help from above. And uh, you know, there is a prophecy hanging on your destiny. Between now and Sunday, November 12th, your testimony is in your hand. Many have received already. The manifestation, full scale testimony, it will come to pass. Somebody, amen, is the loudest who will rejoice with you. You will be a testifier in the name of Jesus. Divine help and form. Our anchor scripture, Hebrew 4.16. Hebrew, we have come to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help when we need it in time of need. And on Sunday, I started by a statement saying, the son of nobody will become somebody. Can you remember? That is the voice of the Spirit. The Lord said to me, this month, those of us who are nobody, forget about people who have arrived. I know many of you, you are work in progress. If you are one of us, can I see your hand? Uh, so God is working on our destiny. Just give us some time. And God says, the son of nobody will become somebody. We read a scripture in 1 Samuel 2, 7 to 8. He said, God make rich and God make poor. God bring low and God lift up. Those of you whose amen is the loudest, God is lifting you. The lifter of destiny. The lifter of destiny. Oh, we sang that song on Sunday. Everything is possible when you hold my hand. Everything is possible when you lift my head. Everything is possible. Then we ended up with a confession. Hold my hand, Lord. Show me the way, Lord. Lead me in the way you want me to go. Verse 8 of that scripture, of 1 Samuel 2, verse 8 now. He said, he will raise the poor. I have an assurance that this month, God is going to make somebody rich. Yes. You will swim in wealth. Yes. Riches untold. It's coming. He will lift the poor from the dust and lift the beggar from the donkey. Someone is saying amen this month, no begging. Yes. No borrowing. Yes. In the name of Jesus. And we continued saying that God can give life to the dead. So if you are not dead, you don't have a case. 
so many hope for you, hope in God for you. He gives life, Romans 4, 17. God who quickens the dead. He gives life to people who are dead. Lazarus was four days dead, but God brought Lazarus back to life. He can give hope and restore any destiny. He can, he can bring life to any situation. God who quicken the dead and call the things that be not as told them. He can give life to your career, life to your destiny, life to your marriage, life to your business. Can I hear a sharp, loud amen? So life is coming. And we serve a God that brings out something out of nothing. The entire earth we enjoy today, God created it out of nothing. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. No wonder Hebrew 11 verse 3. Hebrew 11 verse 3 says, by faith, we understand that the world, that is the earth we live in, our aeon, our current world, and everything that fills the world. He says, by faith, we understand that the world were framed, fashioned, created by the word of God, so that the things which are seen, they came out of things that do not appear. Give me message translation of that later part. Hebrew 11.3 message translation now. He said, by faith we see the word called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we don't see. How is, this, is, this is a paradox. He said, what we see created by what we don't see. C can you process that? What we cannot see creates what we can see. Visible from the invisible. What appear from what do not appear. I serve that God that brings something out of nothing. He can create a life, a new life, a new you, a new business, a new career, a new destiny, a new marriage, a new idea in this month of divine help. Is somebody receiving it? So God can make the son of nobody to become somebody. He said that to me. He said this month, people of no repute, of low repute, I'm going to bring something out of them. I'm going to make the son of nobody to become somebody. I'm going to bring greatness out of this congregation because the things we see came out of the things we cannot see. Came out of the things that do not appear. And that's what the Lord is saying tonight. As we go deeper in this teaching, God wants to make something great out of you. He wants to bring something quality out of you. Today, it looks like you are not a person to be reckoned with, but God wants to take you to the highest level in your career. He wants to make you dine with kings, with those who matter in your field, in your sector. Erase the beggar from the dunk hill and set them among the princes. He wants to take you to great places. He's going to make the son of nobody to become somebody. Are you ready for that? My, my, my case study tonight is Saul. 1 Samuel chapter 9. Saul was a son of nobody. In fact, go to verse 3, 1 Samuel 9, verse 3. He said, Now the donkeys belonging to Saul's father, Kish, were lost. They were that poor. And Kish said to his son, Take one of the servants and with you and go look for the donkey. This man cannot even afford a lost donkey. Go look for it. Then Saul began that journey looking for the donkey of his father with the slave or the servant of his father. The Bible says that they went three days looking for donkeys. 
from one hill to another, from one valley to another. And after three days, they got exhausted. And Saul said to the servant, go to verse 6 now. He said, we need to go back home. Let my father start worrying about us. Because after three days of search, how can a man be that poor that you are looking for a goat for three days? Tell your neighbor, the son of nobody will become somebody. So this is the background of Mr. Saul. They can't afford donkey going astray. They spent three days looking for donkey. Then after the third day, Saul said to the servant, let's go back home. I'm sure my father is worried for me now. Uh, we, uh, otherwise, he, he will abandon donkey and start looking for us. Then in verse 6, the servant said to him something remarkable. Tonight I'm teaching and I'm also bringing a lesson. I believe that I didn't want to go this direction, but the Holy Ghost says somebody needs to take this from this meeting tonight. Verse 6, the servant replied, Saul now, he said, look, in this town there is a man of God. This is what to do when you are in a fix. This is what to do when you are believing God for your next level. This is what to do when you trust God. Are you looking for something you have not found it? You need to change your job. You need a new job. You need to advance in your career. Is there a man of God in town? Then the servant said to Saul, he said, there is a man of God in town. He's highly respected. Everything he says comes true. Let's go there now. Perhaps he will tell us what way to take. It's still all about this donkey matter. Let's go to see the seer, other translation put it, that he may tell us where we can find our donkey. Verse 10, they agree to look for a man of God. This is what to do when you need to change your level. Look for your pastor to agree with you. Pastor, this is what I am trusting the Lord for. This is what I am going through. Confide in your man of God. Your next level is in the mouth of your pastor. Second Chronicle 20, 20 says, Believe the Lord your God. Believe also his prophet. Then you prosper. Oh, you can pray on your own. You know, but there are things God will show the man set over your life that you will never see. Based on his office. There are danger. The Lord will show your pastor about you and a word for you. A genuine man of God will always have a word for his people. Even if it's God bless you, it's prophetic. Praise the Lord. For example, this month, the word from your pastor and from the Lord for you is that this is your month of divine help. You believe it? The word for you is that between now and Sunday, you're going to have a major testimony. Do you believe it? Believe he also is prophet. Then you prosper. If you don't believe, you won't see. There must be an alignment. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it, align with it. What we see here is that this man was chasing donkey, but God had prepared his servant to anoint somebody to be king. How many people are chasing donkey? Irrelevant in life. Looking for what is not lost, what will not satisfy, what will not enable them to fulfill destiny. And you see, it is based on what you see per time. But that there are things God show his servant and declare, put in his heart. I say it again. For your destiny, everyone connected to this commission, this month of November is your month of divine help. Yes. Do you believe it? That is the word of the Lord for you. So position yourself this month and say, Lord, I receive help. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. I believe your servant. I believe this prophetic word. We were so many, it was declared on Shiloh altar. But that word is meant for me. Can I hear even to that? That word is my word. It's my customized word. 
So they went looking for Samuel. And eventually they found Samuel. Verse 15. Now, the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, go to NIV, continue, but 16, fast and go to NIV, you know. So, about this time tomorrow, I will send to you a man from the land of Benjamin, anoint him ruler, this is the donkey chaser, over my people Israel, he will deliver them from the land of the Philistines. And I will have, I have looked on my people for their cry has reached to me. Verse 17. Let's read that then we come back to it. When Samuel caught the sight of Saul, the Lord said to him, this is the man I spoke to you about. He will govern my people. You know what I want to bring out and why I'm reading this? The Lord said, everything you are going through is a setup. Donkey is not the issue. There's something about your destiny. You are chasing donkey, but God says, I have the throne for you. You are looking for survivor. God says, I have the throne for you. You've tried so many businesses that did not work. God says, I have the throne for you. A donkey chaser became a king. The son of nobody, the son of Mr. Kish became a king. This month, God wants to help you. He wants to help your destiny. I want you to align. Jesus, I give up my ambition for your vision, for your purpose, for your plan, for my life. Saul was chasing donkey. Is he here? No, he's not here. Is he here? He's not here. But God has spoken to Samuel in his ear. I have somebody who is going to be the king. He's coming to you. This man was chasing donkey. God already planned a kingdom for him. You are planning to Japa. God had nations for you. In fact, your mission of coming for this service today is for your visa to be approved. Or for you to have permanent residence of the nation where you live. And God is saying, no, I don't want you to be local while you are in UK. I don't want you to be local while you are in US. I don't want you to be local while you are in Canada. You are a global citizen. You have something to do in many nations of the world. Saul was a donkey chaser. But here is a kingdom. God has planned for him. Matters of the kingdom. You are looking for a job. God says, I have businesses lined up for you. Opportunities lined up for you. You're just chasing small things. You are tearing and crying about a car when you are meant to be giving out in a year six cars to people. Free. Matter of the kingdom. We're talking about destiny. We're talking about purpose, not survivor. Not ambition. Not situation. Situation has pushed a lot of people to catch vision. Somebody is out of job. Then all of a sudden, he hears the voice of the Lord that is called into ministry. The suffering of being out of job is the reason for the calling. That's what we call situational call. Uh, it's not divine. He said, Pastor, in fact, I heard God clearly that the reason I'm suffering is because I refuse to obey this call. Have you heard such a statement before? That the reason I'm suffering is because God called me and I didn't obey the call. See, God's call does not impoverish people. God's call does not take your life down. There will be teaching issue in ministry. There will be time you will be in uncompleted building in ministry. But you will enjoy it. In uncompleted building there will be grace. There will be impartation. The joy 
that will radiate will be joy unspeakable, full of glory. And what I've just said is our life. Anybody know what I'm talking about? How many of us were in the uncompleted building in this ministry? We were there but rejoicing. Joy unspeakable. Finding our wives in uncompleted building. <laughs> uncompleted building. Destiny be made in uncompleted building. May God give you understanding. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, so maybe you, you are in, at a stage in your business that look like things are not working. If truly God has commanded that business, that ticking stage, you will enjoy it. And it will not be prolonged. We were doing beautification in non-competent building. Decoration in non-competent building. Putting balloon. I mean, crazy joy. Uncompleted building. Uncompleted building. Praise the Lord. And we were seeing results. We were recording messages in uncompleted building. And that time I'm preaching, somebody will put a tape in my mouth, taking prophecy in uncompleted building. Getting result. Even at that time. What is the Lord saying to us now? It's all about your destiny, not your situation. Not your ambition. Not what you are going through. And tonight, the word of the Lord to us is that the donkey chaser will become a king. There are people who are chasing irrelevant. Doing, doing things that God did not command. And God is saying, this is the month of divine help. I, I have proposed to give you the throne. I have proposed to elevate you. If you are that person, can I hear your amen? amen. That, that is the voice of God to you tonight. That's the voice of God to you tonight. Go to verse 20 of the same scripture. Chapter 9, uh, verse 20 now. Verse 20. Let's see what the Lord said. He said, then when eventually they found Samuel, see, in the mouth of your man of God is a word for your next level. Trying to keep things for yourself will put a lot of people, make them suffer. Just a small prayer, two minutes prayer, one minute prayer can save you lifetime stress. In the mouth of your man of God is destiny, not survivor. That's why every time I minister, I speak to you more about your future, not what you are going through right now. When they go to Samuel verse 20, the Bible says, Samuel said to them, he said, for the donkey you lost three days ago, don't worry about them. They have been found. Somebody is saying amen now. What you are looking for in life, they have been found. The job you are looking for, found. Found. Husband found. Wife found. I want you to position yourself. The donkey you seek. This is not the issue. This is just a setup for you to meet destiny. The donkey you are looking for, verse 20. He said they have been found. And for whom is all the desire of Israel turned? if not for you and your whole family. We are not talking about chasing donkey. We are talking about the destiny of a whole nation is on you, Saul. Then verse 21, let's see if Saul responds. Then Saul answered, he said, am I not a Benjamite from the smaller tribe of Israel? In case you don't know me, I'm a son of nobody. It's not my clan, the least of all the clan of the tribe of Benjamin. So he's trying to say, <laughs> uh, when they talk about people who should be king, my tribe, is a, I'm a Benjamite. Then when you now get to Benjamin, my own tribe is the smallest of the clan in Benjamin. I'm a nobody. 
If you are distributing kingship, you should not get to my tongue. Man of God, this prophecy, I don't think is for me. Go back to that scripture in verse 21. He said, why do you say such a thing to me? Why are you prophesying this kind of word to me? I'm a donkey chaser. I am not here for kingship. I'm here to tell me where to find my destiny, where to find my donkey. What the Lord is saying is that this month is going to do beyond your expectation. Some of you, you are looking for donkey is going to give you destiny. It's going to give you purpose. It's going to give you assignment. It's going to give you matters of the kingdom. There are people who are looking for survival. Pastor, if it's just money for this, money for exam, money for uh, school fees, money for this one, money for that one. God said, I'm going to give that to you because the donkey you are looking for has been found, but I want to give you your future. I want to give you your destiny. I don't want to just give you survival. I want to give you your destiny. I want to give you nations. I want to give you businesses. I want to give you opportunity. Can I hear amen to that? Amen. Jump to verse 27. Jump to verse 27. And see verse 27, solid instruction in verse 27. I don't know why I just decided to go this teaching. It's a big deviation from. It connects with the help because Saul, a donkey chaser, eventually received help. And the son of nobody, Mr. Kish, became the first citizen in Israel. That is the end of this message. But I'm bringing out this because of someone. This 27 is very important. He said, as they were going to the edge of the town, Samuel said to Saul, tell your servant to go ahead of us. And the servant did so. But you stay here for a while. For I want to give you message from God. Why will he tell? Don't forget. If you read the whole of this chapter. When the donkey got lost. The father said to Saul. Go with your, my servant to look for the donkey. When Saul got exhausted in verse 5 and verse 6. He said let's go home. It was the servant that said there is a man of God in this town. Then Saul in verse 6 and 7, he told the servant, he said, I don't have offering to give the man of God. I don't have food to give the man of God. The servant said again, I have some money that we can give to the man of God. So this servant has been instrumental in all of this journey. But when it comes to message for Saul, Samuel said, let the servant go ahead. There's something about your future that people in your circle right now don't merit. You need to send them away. There are people who will be intimidated by what God is about to do in your life. Matters of the kingdom is not for everybody. There are things God wants to do in your life. You need to keep your mouth shut. You need to keep your mouth shut. Don't announce your testimony before they happen. Matters of the kingdom is not to be discussed with everybody. There are people who don't merit. I'm, I'm talking about destiny. Something about your inheritance, your assignment, your purpose. Samuel said, let the messenger go ahead. There is a message from God I want to give to you. And it has to do with the throne. So he doesn't want that information to be on the shop floor for everybody. And he says, let the servant, let him go ahead of you. Tonight, I believe the reason God is asking me to say this again is for somebody who is announcing their throne before they occupy it. Somebody who is announcing their dreams, announcing what God has told them before they manifest. Somebody who is about to abort the great things that God has in mind for his destiny. And God is saying this evening, keep your mouth shut. Stop announcing your dream. That is the reason why Joseph suffered. Because he was telling the father, telling the brother, I saw your sheep bowing down to my sheep. I saw the stars bowing down to my star. I saw the sun and the moon bowing down to my star. 
Then some people got intimidated. There are people who don't, if it is matter of your destiny, it's not for public hearing. You must keep your mouth shut. And tonight, God is saying, he has proposed that he will give you help. He's going to make the son of nobody to become somebody. Are you ready tonight? It's going to, you're going to meet people along the line as you go this month who are going to bless you, who are going to elevate you, who are going to bring the word of God to pass in your life. If you go to chapter 10, verse 3 and 4, we wrap up there. Chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. Samuel now said to Saul, he said, when you live here, you will meet three men. You will meet three men going to worship at Bethel. And when you meet them, you will see them carrying three goats, three loaves of bread, and three skins of wine. So they are going to be carrying substance that will refresh you. Then verse 4 is the blessing. He said, these men who are carrying your blessing, this destiny helper sent by God, he said, they will greet you. Listen to me this month. Don't lobby for help. Help is coming. Help is coming. Help, help is coming. Help is coming. They, they carry your blessing and they are the one greeting you. They will greet you. And they will offer you. They carry three loaves of bread. Out of the three, they will give you two. Three men carrying three loaves of bread. They gave you two and they are left with one. They will greet you. They will give you. Then the last thing is that you will accept it from their hand. Listen to me this month. There are people who are carrying your future. Carrying your inheritance. Carrying your destiny. The Bible says number one. They will greet you. That's favor. Somebody carrying your destiny. You, are, you should be the one lobbying for their help. He said no. But when they sight you. They will greet you. When Samuel saw Saul. He said this is the man I'm telling you about. When they see you this month. They will recognize you. They, they will know you carry something. That God has been telling them about. There are people who are listening to me tonight. Families who have resolved to bless young people. They have been praying that God will bring them in contact with somebody of your profile. And when they see you, they will greet you. They will give you. And you will accept it from their hand. This month of November, they will greet you. They will give you. And you will accept it from their hand. If you go to verse 6 of that chapter 10, verse 6 of chapter 10, he said, and the spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you. Then you will prophesy with them. Then you will be changed into a different person. It's not the you that started November that will end November. As we pray in the Holy Ghost here tonight, you are turned into another man. As we pray in the Spirit right now, help is looking for you. Now lift up your voice, aggressively pray in the Spirit. The way you need that help, pray in the Spirit. As you pray in the Holy Ghost, loud, help is coming, help is coming, help is coming from everywhere. It's coming from everywhere. It's coming. Help is coming. Help is coming. Lift up your voice. Pray for yourself now. You'll be turning to another man. Help is coming for you. Lift up your voice. They will give you. They will greet you. You will accept from them. The donkey chaser is becoming a king. The son of nobody becoming somebody. Industry app is coming. He your chosen field app has come. The Lord is smiling on you as you're praying the Holy Ghost. 
You will meet a company of prophets. You will prophesy with them. And you shall be turned into another man. I wish you can pray. When you prophesy with them, that is when you are turned into another man, another woman. This is how help is coming. Help is going to come when you pray. Help is coming for your business. Help is coming for your career. And everything you do after now shall prosper. The hand of the Lord is open to satisfy the desire of the living. He will give them their food, their meat in due season. The son of nobody is receiving help now. The son of nobody is receiving help now. I will leave the beggar from the dunghill and set them among the priests that they may hear it. The truth that they may hear it. Glory. Help is here. Help is here. Let the Samuel, let the Saul, let the Esther in this house receive help. Let the Bosa receive help. Let the Ayamida receive help. Let the Olabides receive help. Receive him. I wish you pray. Pray. This help is coming. You are turning to another man. Let the mic receive him. Help is here. Help is here. And they call me no man like a thing. Help is here. Help is here. Is here. Akaya, Akaya. Hallelujah. Listen, listen to me. If everything about your life is about effort, it's about struggle, you don't know the subject matter the Lord is bringing us this month. You should get to a point in your life and say to yourself, how did I get here? How did I get here? This is nothing but the finger of God. This is nothing but the help of God. He said, when you meet this company of prophets, what they are doing, do it with them. If we are praying, praying with us, then you will be turned into another man. Then you get to the high places of life. You will be turned into, I wish when we are praying before we partake of the communion tonight, you will pray intensely. This month, I receive help. Somebody need to cry tonight. Lord, I don't want to chase donkey again. I'm tired of chasing donkey. Let the king heritage, let the throne heritage in my destiny. Let you come alive. Let your purpose, let your plan for my destiny. I'm tired of survivor. Chasing donkeys of survivor. Spending three days, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, sweating, day and night, until food exhausted. Then the servant say, hey, when we get to a fix like that, let's go for midweek service. There's still a man of God in town who has the word of the Lord. And the word for you tonight is that the son of nobody will become somebody. God wants to bring greatness out of you. He wants to give you purpose. He wants to give you king in your throne. He wants to give you destiny. Listen to me tonight. Jack Ma is survivor. He's survivor. He's survivor. Take that from your pastor tonight. He's survivor. You just 
I, I, I tell you, many were jack my you don't know the stress they go through. Some don't settle down in the first three, four years. Survivor. Survivor. We are talking destiny. We are talking about destiny. We are talking about purpose. Stop chasing donkeys. Go after your heritage. Pray purpose prayer. Lord, I only surrender to your will and to your way. And after this service, like the drama we watched, I think it was on Sunday. If he says, search a code, search a code. If he say align with this person, align with that person. And I see why the Lord wants me to go principal tonight and not just go straight to divine help. He wants you to keep your mouth shut when he reveals destiny to you. He wants you to send some people away from your circle who don't merit your secret and the things God is about to do in your life. He wants you, want you to let them go in front until Lot was separated from Abraham. Abraham never received the land. After Lot was separated, Lot said to him, lift your eye. As far as you can see, I've given it to you. Until the year King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, never saw the Lord. Until some people leave your circle, you won't see. You won't know. You won't enter your purpose. Tonight, the prayer in your quiet time is that, who is that person in my circle that does not merit my next level? Who will be intimidated? I'm not talking about prayer of now. I'm talking about a prayer of five years time. Somebody who can stand what God is about to do in your life. Then you begin to systematically, prayerfully, begin to pray yourself and pray those people out of your life. Because sharing your secret with them will intimidate them and they may choke it. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want you to lift up your voice as it is applied to you tonight. Many prophetic words have gone forth. I want you to pick your word and in two minutes tonight, I want you to wrap you in the spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Pray in the spirit right now. Jesus, purpose, destiny, assignment, matters of the kingdom. That's what I pray for. That's what I pray for. That's what I'm lying for. This may, the, the Holy Ghost may tell someone to leave what you are doing right now, to do the right thing. Pray. You have one and a half minutes more to pray. Right to in the spirit. Let them bring the come to her. Pray the Holy Ghost. Seconds more. Lord, help me, help me to align. You have 30 seconds more. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender to your will and to your way. Jesus name we pray are you in church tonight you don't know Jesus and you are saying pastor please pray for me I want to move close to him this service is my service lift up your right hand above your head and I will be praying for you lift it very high this is your night lift it high if you are lifting up your hand say with me say father in the name of Jesus have mercy on me wash me by your blood make me whole I confess Jesus, Lord over my life, no more to sin, no more to the devil. I am born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me in Jesus' name. Cover you in the blood of Jesus. By your declaration tonight, you are safe. You will not return to your vomit. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you said that prayer, sleep has been given to you. Feel it and return it to the same person that gave it to you. Everyone stand on your feet right now as we approach the communion table. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, you're going to lift up your voice. This is a communion of purpose, a communion of destiny. It's a communion of purpose. It's a communion of destiny. Yes, lift up your voice. Let's worship. 
Somebody just pray as we take the communion tonight. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender. I surrender. above your head tonight. Say with me, this is the flesh of Jesus. As I eat this flesh, my eyes of understanding is enlightened. By this flesh, I receive life in my spirit, in my soul, in my body. Let my eyes be open to know your plan and purpose for my life and destiny. Thank you Jesus. In Jesus name. Break it and eat it tonight. Thank you Jesus. In the same manner I took the cup. I'd like you to lift the cup above your head. Say with me this is the blood of Jesus. By this blood I receive life in my spirit, in my soul, in my body. By this blood my eyes of understanding is enlightened in Jesus' name. Drink the blood right now. I'm praying the Spirit. Lift up your voice and pray in the Spirit. By the communion tonight, purpose will be discovered. You will walk in destiny in the name of Jesus. Your inheritance will not be taken away from you. By this communion tonight, somebody will not chase donkey anymore in the name of Jesus. Your destiny is here by coming to you. You're turning to another man. In the mighty name of Jesus. As you go from this place, you will meet three men. And they will carry what you want. They will greet you. They will give you. And you will accept from their hand. As you leave service tonight, you will meet favor. You will meet grace. You will meet mercy. You will receive help. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me tonight. Saul did not go looking for the throne. The, soul, the throne came looking for Saul. Help is coming for you. It will come everywhere. When you leave service today, people will queue up to help you. They will struggle to help you. Somebody will say, I will do it. The other person will say, I will do it. Can I hear a fire amen from someone? In the name of Jesus.